Hello, I'm Benson and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a couple of products I bought from AliExpress. Now this video is not exactly sponsored, but some of this stuff I did get it for free. And if you do use my affiliated link, I do get some money back from them as well. So this keep my channel growing. So the Gyo PETG carbon fiber reinforced um, filament is what I got. So um, in terms of price wise, um, this one here cost me about £12 per wheel because I bought five of them at one time. It's kind of less than half the price of the uh, bamboo lab. So definitely worth checking out. So at first, when I print it, um, obviously you do get some uh, failure because you do have to um, adjust. But um, once you get the temperature adjusted and um, get the flow rate right, and you start to get some really interesting parts. They are really, really strong because they are fiber um, reinforced. When you get it right, it's fantastic. But I'm still in the process of fine tuning it because you can see some of them are still not exactly 100%, but this is already working um, in terms of as my tool in the workshop here. I do need something very durable and heat resistant. So this is one of those uh, four inch pipe uh, connector thing. So I'm gonna put magnet in there and they catch onto each other. So this is really, really tough stuff. Obviously for fun as well, I'm gonna make some props with it. So this is a sword that I made with the uh, PETG carbon fiber reinforced uh, filament. But um, depends on how you print it. This flax is from the joints, it's not from the material. That will be a separate video that I'm going to update in the series of my uh, Bamboo Lab P2S. I also got the nozzle, so you can't use a uh, normal nozzle for this, especially the brass one. The one came with the Bamboo Lab, I think is hardened steel, um, if it is 0 0.4. Uh, but I also found some aftermarket um, hot ends that are actually using with my P2S, which printed this kind of thing. And it has an exchangeable tip, so you know, I think this is really good value, but again, Again, that will be a separate video um, altogether. The star of today's show is actually in this pack right here. So a lot of questions that I have about the P2S Bamboo Lab is that um, the air quality problem. So because it's now drawing fresh air from the outside to cool the filament, um, people are saying that, you know, how about the fumes? Because it's no longer using the filter inside when they recirculates the, um, the air inside the enclosure. So some people say, oh, um, you should build a wide riser so that, you know, let the heat out a bit, leave the door open. Um, yeah, we got to deal with all that. But at the moment, when I'm after printing the PETG um, carbon fiber, even when I open the door, you, can, you, you will be hit by some of these like fumes. I don't know how dangerous it is, but I do want to know what I'm dealing with. So that's why I got some air detector from uh, AliExpress. Now I don't want to use anything expensive because it's going to be like a uh, one-off project thing. So this thing here cost me about eight pounds something on AliExpress each, like this format. So this is tiny. So air quality detector, there's loads of these versions on the market. It, this one does have a small lithium battery of 1,200 milliamp hour. I intend to use a power bank with it, so you know the internal battery is not really that necessary. Um, but you can always use a uh, continuous um, power power supply like a USB charger, and then come in a short cable. You got a power button on the side. You got a USB C uh, cable slot, and if you long press the button power button, it should power up. So this is what eight pounds will get you on AliExpress including delivery. Now in the old days, you do take some time for it to arrive, um, like three weeks or something like that. But now they have this uh, choice thing that you can actually uh, get uh, free shipping as well as a uh, fast delivery. So for example, the gyro filament, um, if you buy today, which is a Monday, you get it before the Saturday this week. They, they do come with a protective film and they come with a little tab. It doesn't work. The tab just comes straight off. A typical Asian, they leave it on to protect it, but for me, it's cheap stuff anyway. So I'm not going to do that. Power it up. It does give you a battery indicator on the top there. And this one is already showing um, some of the HO value and TVOC value. So just do a bit of jargon busting. So the HCHO is the formaldehyde and the TVOC is the total volatile organic compound. So side by side, I got pretty uh, standard results on both sides. So carbon dioxide is 414 uh, part per million. HCHO is 0 0.002. TVOC is 0 0.03. Humidity is 60 
percent. Now in my studio, I don't usually open the window. Um, that's because of first, I don't want to lose all the heat. And secondly, I'm in the garden. So if I open the door, a lot of moisture from the surrounding soil and the garden will actually increase the humidity in this particular environment. I do have a grid connected inverter, which constantly pumping out some heat. So even though this is a non habitable place, um, I do have some residual heat here over the winter time. It very rarely drop below like 10 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one inside the P2S and one outside the P2S. This one is printing at the moment. It is, it's not a very big uh, module, so it won't squash my um, monitor. So I'm going to put this one inside. And I'm going to put this one just on the outside. And I'm going to leave it running for about five minutes and then come back and have a look. So it has been a couple of minutes, so it's stabilized. So at the outside temperature is 20 degrees at the moment and the humidity is 56%. And you can see that, you know, the HXO and the TVOC doesn't really increase that much. Um, it's only a 0 0.006 and 0 0.029. Now inside the printer, there's a, a identical machine and this is uh, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So why is that in Fahrenheit? So I might have to change that. But in terms of the um, H See, but in terms of the HCHO is 0.003 and the TVOC is 0.009. So in terms of the TVOC, it's actually higher on the outside than the inside, which is not what I expected. So let's swap the two machines over and see uh, what the result will be like. It's printing okay. No defects or anything like that. You can see. And this is uh, PETG. Now, interestingly, one of the machine is showing higher numbers. So the one on the left is showing 12 and 40, well, 0 0.042 or 0 0.012. Whereas the other one is showing three and seven, which is 0 0.0, actually is nothing, 0 0.01. We might have a faulty unit. In terms of smell, I don't smell any plastic or anything like that though, unless I open the door and sniff inside, but. Okay, so first of all, it looks like the sensor on the left is doing its job, but the one on the right is not really doing its job. So the one on the left is showing the HCHO level rise by um, 0 0.1, and the TVOC um, is 0 0.3 now on the left-hand side, there's only 0 0.05 on the right-hand side. Carbon, and the carbon dioxide level inside the machine is going up. That's why it's beeping a bit. Okay, so around the machine, this is the number which is showing at the moment. And now I'm going to switch on my air filter. Let's see if it makes any difference. As you can see, once we take it out of the case, it drops. And then when you turn on the air purifier, it drops even more. So that's the experiment so far with my uh, air monitoring. It's unfortunate that one of them doesn't work. So this one have to go back. The P2S tends to 
capture everything inside um, the machine itself. Um, the only smell that I get is either when I open the door or after printing. If I leave it overnight, obviously whatever inside the container um, diffuse out maybe, that can smell some of the plastic smell. But when it's working like this, I don't really smell anything. Besides, I have a couple of um, homemade uh, air purifier there. Yeah, I will put some activated uh, charcoal in there just to absorb whatever um, harmful stuff that might come out. Yeah, if you do work with filament a lot, tell me what you think. Do you take your air quality seriously? I mean, obviously, open the windows, open the door, that will be the, sensi that will be the sensible thing to do. But if you're in my situation where you want to keep, keep the humidity and the warmth in without affecting too much of your environment, then opening the window and door might not be an option. So like I said at the beginning, I will put the link in the description um, for all this AliExpress stuff that I bought. If you find my information useful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe to my channel to help me grow. I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadgets. Bye bye. Tech and gadgets, light as fire, he's got a knack DIY runs in his veins, there's no turning back Two kids by his side, a family so tight A loving wife